Hi, this is Zach Mayer with the Bulletin Board Heroes, the weekend edition here at Zach's Traders Cafe for Saturday, the 20th of May. Starting off with the FTSE 100, we're still uh, the dance either side of the 50 day moving average continues. That's around uh, 77.10 at the moment, and we've been uh, trying to escape that area for the best part of this month. Want to see an end of day close through 7800, which has been rather elusive in recent times, and also a break of 7700 could lead us down to 7630 which was the initial April support at the moment. A bit of a difficult one here, but obviously we are in a rising trend channel from the uh, start of the autumn last year, rising 200 day line as well. So I suppose the uh, balance just tipped in favour of the bulls, especially as the consolidation has largely been above the 50 day line. So the technical glass half full rather than half empty. Moving on to the DAX, which has done a rather better job of being bullish in the recent past. Uh, here you can see that we gapped up on Thursday, held the gap and broke the high of Thursdays. That's a very strong signal. Hopefully that some of that uh, pixie dust will uh, rub off on the uh, FTSE over the next uh, week or two. But uh, rising trend channel there from September, top of the channel there as high as 16,800, which we're looking for or were looking for by the end of next month. But the way things are going, we might even get that by the end of this month. Only back below recent support, 15,900 really uh, upsetting the idea of a push to the upside and a very impressive one at that. On to the Dow, which has certainly not been uh, as good as the uh, DAX in the recent past. Uh, here you can see the ongoing battle with the 50-day moving average. Like the FTSE, though, it's uh, largely above the rising 50-day line, around 33,100. We've also got a rising 200-day line and um, obviously the rising trend channel from back in September. Main thing here really is to break that uh, resistance line there from last April, uh, April 22, that is, at 34,000, which would then give us the big breakout potential towards 37,000 over the course of the summer. At the moment, the worst on the downside seen as being the 200-day line and the floor of that channel, around 32,800. On to Bitcoin, which has uh, gone rather uh, quiet of late after the great start it made to uh, 2023. Here you can see that we're largely holding above that late March support, 26,700. There is the risk of down to 25,000, but uh, the way the price action is going at the moment looks as though we might have seen the worst after that uh, pullback from the 31,000 area. If you're looking for a buy trigger, then it would be up towards uh, the minimum would be uh, the April resistance line there around 27,800. Otherwise, a clearance of the 50-day line, 28,000. 600 would be the uh, trigger that you're looking for. Of course, at the moment, the RSI well below 50, so some people might just wait for that to uh, cross back above neutral 50 before deciding it's time to uh, go on the long side again. On to the uh, stocks, and uh, starting off with Abingdon Health, where uh, I was asked uh, what the target here would be if we managed to get above 12 and a half pence. Well, it looks as though it would be that resistance line there from February, heading towards the 20 pence zone. It sort of fits that uh, trajectory, and uh, that would be by the end of next month if we can get a quick break of 12.5 pence sometime this month. As far as support is concerned, it looks as though it's pretty healthy above the 50-day uh, moving average currently at 7. So above 7, looking for 12.5 and then 20 on Abingdon. On to uh, one of the stocks of the past week, uh, which has been our expiration, uh, hitting all those milestones and in an accelerating fashion. We've also got the same with the share price. We had the gap higher back in April, filled that gap and then bounced. And we've had another good gap um, over the course of May, unfilled gap to the upside and now pushing through what was previously sticky resistance around 20 to 21 pence. As far as what the upside would be, initially, probably looking for the line that I'm uh, about to draw now, which would be towards the uh, upper 20s. But if you're a fan of the shares and looking for greater glory, then up to 40 pence over the next couple of months could be possible at that uh, late 2021 resistance line projection. But let's go for 28 while we're above uh, 21 and then above 28. Then let's see if we can start to accelerate. Onto a stock which uh, looks as though it's making the first moves to... Uh, revive itself, uh, sent resources. Here we bounced off the 50-day uh, moving average during the week. We've also got or had bullish divergence last month in the RSI window, and so the shares have actually improved off the back of that. 
Unfold gap to the upside on Friday as well, so uh, above recent support around uh, the uh, 3.3 pence area, looking for as high as uh, 4.2 pence maybe by the end of next month. Nice RSI 50 bounce as well uh, off that neutral 50 level and uh, gapping higher as well. On to Belascura, which has uh, had a bit of a slap in the market of late. Uh, maybe some might say that was a bit unfair, but uh, nice close to the week there. A strong candle uh, opening at the low, closing at the high. We need to break uh, around 36 pence, uh, rather 38 pence to uh, break the 50-day moving average and uh, turn this trend around. But so far we have had a double bottom off uh, the March support and that uh, bullish divergence line there suggests that we will break 38 and maybe head up to as high as 50 pence as soon as the end of next month. If you're cautious, you wait for that RSI to push through neutral 50. Next stock on the roster is one that looks as though it's ready to deliver a fresh leg to the upside. So we bounced off uh, what was the previous target here around uh, 1.1 pence. Looking for 1.8 pence as soon as the end of next month after the golden cross that we've had in the last week or so. And upside valid certainly while we're above old resistance at a penny. So above a penny looking for as high as 1.8 there on uh, GS Technologies. Uh, AI, the flavour of the moment, flavour of the month as well as well, flavour of the year. And uh, here we've got InSig AI, which uh, certainly has the right name. Bounced off the uh, 200 day moving average on Friday around uh, 19 pence and above that we're looking for 30 pence as soon as the end of next month, which is the top of that broadening triangle from back in October. Crops had a good end to the week and here you can see that we've had uh, good support here at for, uh, former resistance on the way down around the 3.4 pence level above that we're looking for, we were looking for 5 pence as an initial target up through 5 pence perhaps as high as 8 pence if we can get through 5 by the end of this month but the more price action there above the 200 day moving average at 4 pence the better for the bull cause another techie situation which looks as though it may be starting to gather that momentum is uh, Quantum Exponential, here we've had a sideways shuffle at and above the 200-day moving average, also above the 50-day uh, line in recent days as well. So it looks as though it will push higher above 2.1 pence in the 200-day line, We're looking for 4 pence as soon as the end of next month. So a few stocks in uh, this selection which look as though they might be finally emerging from a, a weak period. The first one is uh, Sovereign Metals. Uh, we, we bounced off this uptrend line from... Uh, Back in uh, September, that was around 22 pence above that. We're looking for the shares to at least fill the gap up towards 28 pence by the end of next month. Ultimate target here over the next one to two months as high as 34 pence while we stay above recent 22 pence support. Another stock which uh, is uh, certainly looking rather healthy at the moment is Supply Me Capital. We've noticed how the uh, the uh, stone throws have gone a bit quiet, and so they should. The shares have really done well over the recent past, more than doubled. V-shaped bull flag breakout and the initial May resistance there around uh, 0 0.12. Above that, looking for as high as uh, 0.18, which has been the target here for the best part of a month. So good to see the shares delivering and uh, just waiting now for the 200-day line to rise. And hopefully we'll get a bit more momentum there. Unfilled gap, two unfilled gaps to the upside this week. So this does look like a serious re-rate, which I'm sure will uh, upset and disappoint the bears of that stock. In fact, if, we get to, uh, if, you want, if you're looking for a, a bigger target, uh, the ultimate target here could be into the low 20s at that uh, higher resistance line there from the early part of last year. But the key here is remaining above 0.1 pence. Just a couple of stocks to go now. First one is uh, Union Jack, and uh, here I was suggesting that uh, the market might start uh, rewarding the company in share price terms, given all the uh, good production news. Here we've broken up above, well, we had a gap through the 50-day moving average during the week, broken a line of resistance there from November, around 25 pence, and we're looking for 32 pence here as soon as the end of next month, especially with that bullish divergence line and uh, the uh, gap that we've had over the recent past. Finishing off with another stock which seems to be uh, just emerging from its uh, bear uh, phase that it's had over the last uh, couple of years. In fact, here we've got a double bottom here for Zenith Energy. Bullish divergence on that uh, double bottom. And uh, while some might be waiting for an end-of-day close through the 50-day moving average at 0.5, uh, there may be a cause to take note of that bullish divergence line there 
and assume that the low is already in place. About 0.5, if we get there, would be up to 0.8 over the next couple of months. That's it for me today. More updates during the week.